Bradley Motel. What up, guys? NJ Bike Life here, and we're out on FZ. I got some good and some bad news. Good news is the FZ works just fine. Bad news is the dirt bike needs to get these valves adjusted, a new air filter, and some brake fluid. Well, that was smart. Just block everyone in the road just so that you can go. That's, that's a real idiot. So, anyway, the dirt bike is going to need its valves. Um, I had a feeling it was going to need that because the dirt bike's got 13,000 on it. And what that means to me is it's really got like 17, 16, 17. Because with the sprockets changed and the speedo never adjusted, the, the mileage is off. And it's off by adding more or adding less. So it's definitely due for the valve adjustments. The, the bad news with that is, is that it's $400 to adjust the valves. It's $92 an hour, it's about four hour jobs. So it's good or bad. It, it's good because it's gonna be like a brand new bike with the valves adjusted for $400. So, I'm actually not complaining. I'm not too upset about it. On another note, I figure we'll take this time, especially being that there's a Harley rider in front of us, to go over the goods and the bad. When it comes to riding with someone or riding solo. A lot of people always talk about riding with someone, riding with someone, but it could be bad to ride with someone, and in this video, I'll let you guys know why I'm saying this. First off, let's talk about the good things about riding in pairs. We're just going to say pairs for the sake of this video rather than a group. A pair is you and maybe some you, someone else, and maybe one more person. So maximum of three people we'll say is a pair. Even though like a pair of socks is two, we'll just for the sake of this video we'll call a pair you and another person and possibly another friend. The good thing about riding with pair is the fact that you can pretty much make your bikes out to be a car. Say you're riding at night, one headlight, they're not going to know that you're not a car. They're going to th think that you're a car with a headlight out. And they might try to either cut in into your lane, or they might try to, you know, they, they might not realize that you're all the way on the left side of the lane and try to use that lane, like if they're turning quicker and stuff. So. At least, if there's two of you, you can make your lights staggered, even though you don't have to ride staggered with two people, you can ride staggered, and because of that, you can look more like a car. You know, a headlight in the left, a headlight in the right, and then the cars ahead of you will, will also believe that you're a car. And being that you're riding close enough, you'll, you'll act as a car, you know? So that's one of the, the, the better reasons for, for riding in a pair. Another good reason is you're just more visible. You're more visible when you're more than just one little small bike. When you're a small bike and there's a hundred of you, people tend to notice. So even when you're a small bike, you're just riding one, uh, another guy, people will still notice two helmets two bikes, two sounds from the exhaust, two lights, two taillights. They'll notice that a lot more than they would notice, you know, only one bike. Guys, check it out, a wild fox. He's got something he's eating. We're getting down by the shore now, so the foxes are gonna be all over the place, getting all the small rabbits and mice, but, Anyway, as I was saying, another good thing about riding in pairs is if you get lost, you can always have that other friend that might know where you're going, might know where you're at, 
can. It gives you a little bit more experience, a little bit more breathing room when you have two people because you'll kind of be able to react to how they're riding and react to their different types of riding styles and can really push you forward as far as gaining experience. Let's talk about reasons why you would not. Of course, I found the biggest hole and just went right into it. Let's talk about reasons on why you would not want to ride in a pair. The one reason that always gets me whenever I'm riding with a buddy or riding with a friend is turning. When you're turning, if your friend behind you, well, we're going to, in a pair, in these negatives, we're going to talk about the rider being behind you. We could even talk about being front, but for this instance, if you're riding and, you're, and your buddy's behind you and you're turning and they don't see your blinker, they're going to run right into you. I mean, yeah, granted, how many riders are you going to get that aren't looking? Uh, well, you'd be surprised. So, that's one negative. Another negative is evasive movements. A little 250. Nice. When you need to, like, say this car is turning left and I need to go around it to the right. If I need to do that and there's a rider behind me, I have to look in my mirror. I have to make sure they're not coming up beside me. I have to do all these things just to elude this car from running into the back of it. And that might even not be possible because if they're not paying attention and I decide to go around, I could smash into them. So that's like one of my worst, like, I guess you'd call it a pet peeve or something. But every time I ride with a rider and that happens, I always get like so frustrated. Because I always have to look behind and make sure no one's coming, so. That's one of one of my negatives. I don't know if you guys have friends that ride like that, but if you're riding in a pair with a group, you have to know where you know everybody is at all times, and it's just really annoying for me, at least. Another thing about riding with a pair is you don't know anybody's riding style. You don't. Well, I guess if you're first starting to ride with a pair, you don't really know if they're going to be speeding a lot. You don't really know if they feel comfortable going on certain highways so you're going to be pushing their limits and if you're pushing their limits the rides are just not going to be fun you're going to either be too spread far apart while riding you're going to be getting into trouble and things like that so that's another reason why I, I tend to stay away from you know riding in groups and bigger pairs you're not really focused on just yourself you're focused on other riders, other cars. When you're leaving from a stop sign or a stoplight, you're you're constantly thinking about the other rider, if they'll be able to get into the same little jam that you just got into, if they'll be able to get out of certain spots that you're in. You're not really focused on just yourself and focused on the riding. So when it comes to riding in a pair, that's definitely something to either let them know of or, or ask them about prior and see how it goes but I notice when I ride with certain people you have to like wait forever at stop signs because they can't accelerate quicker to get into like the gap in traffic or or things like that and and I always find myself looking in the rear view looking behind me to make sure that the rider is still close or make sure that the rider is comfortable at the pace that we're at and it takes away from my riding and I could, you know, get myself in trouble by riding myself, you know. So that's another thing you guys got to watch out for. Riding in pairs, it's never something you don't want to do. But it's definitely something that has its ups and downs, along with everything in life pretty much, but... Riding in pairs is a good thing. It's fun to ride with friends. It's, it's fun to get out and have an extra body with you to be a little bit bigger than just a small little bike on the road. But it comes with its challenges of, you know, distraction on yourself and distraction on the other rider, possibly. So if you guys agree or disagree or have any other negatives or positives about riding in a pair, let me know in the comment, guys. I'm curious to find out. 
So I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.